How about this TalkPod A36 Plus? A lot of uh, hype about this radio, a lot of people talking about it. When it first came out, there's a lot of videos like, oh my gosh, this is the Baofeng killer. Oh my gosh, this is the best thing in the world. And there were some really good YouTube videos from those YouTubers who showed some flaws about this and that it is not spectrally pure when put on a service monitor or frequency analyzer or spectrum analyzer. And I did not put it on my IFR COM 120B or any other piece of gear in Ritsu, but I'm gonna take their word for it because I see what they've said. But we're not gonna get into that. Spectral purity, probably not. But for a $50 radio sent to me by Amazon for a video, for a $50 radio, is this worth it? Well, I'll show you a couple things I like about this. I do love the green color. It's pretty flashy. No, it doesn't come with this long orange antenna. That's mine, but it does match the button on top for SOS. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna show you a couple things about this, what I like. And this is marketed as a GMRS handheld. Now, if you wanna make this be able to transmit in ham radio, this is all you have to do. Hold the PTT button, hold the number eight, turn it on. You're gonna see the word expand. Let go. Mode. Now it talks on 136 to 174 and 400 through 480. It does have uh, airband receive on it as well, and it will receive some area of 220 that we don't use. But uh, for the majority, this is a dual band VHF UHF five watt handheld with an IP54 rating. So it could be splashed maybe out in the rain, not too bad. Submersible, no, all right. Um, and with this, it's got great audio. I can tell you right now that I just was talking to uh, uh, Scott down there in Port St. Lucie through the 640 repeater and it sounds really good. He said my audio sounds great. So did Phil. So yeah, it sounds pretty good. It's doing the job. Now is that spurious? Maybe. Are you interested in this for communications? Probably. That's why you clicked on the video. All right. And I'll show you. It does have a drop-in charger as a lot of these radios do. Okay. But what I like about this one is it actually has USB-C fast charging in the back. That's great if you have a battery bank, which I don't have here on my desk at the moment, but I got a lot of them. You can charge this with a battery bank. Figure keeping this in the go kit, you know, would be uh, beneficial for a GMRS operator or even someone that wants VHF, UHF handbands on here, right? The manual is pretty, pretty easy. It's very small. I got, I got to tell you, if you're visually impaired, this is a very small print manual. It's very small. Uh, I have one eye, so with my one eye, I have to kind of hold it, you know, three, four inches from my face to see it. But it does give you an idea uh, with a lot. Listen, guys, there's a lot of things that this does that we're not going to need. We're going to trim this down to basics. The one thing I like about, you remember the QRZ1 Explorer radio that they were giving away? Partnership with QRZ.com and Gigaparts was giving this radio away if you got your tech license and you presented the certificate to them. They would ship you the free radio. And it was trimmed down in the firmware for only the things we need, and it was locked to handbands. I liked that radio, okay? Because something like this has a lot of features in it, but we're really not gonna use a lot of them, okay? Now, it does say this has Bluetooth. I did not see that in the menu. So we're gonna find out what that is, because as I went through on the menu, I did not see Bluetooth, all right? But the menu is pretty generic, okay? Kind of just gives you basically what each one of these terms mean. Can you muddle through that? Sure. Okay. And it does, like I said, it does use USB-C charging. So it gives you a USB-A to USB-C cable, right? So that's good for charging there. The little, the little, you know, lanyard thing that you can put around the top here for your wrist strap. All right. This is the antenna that comes with it. And this antenna is just a basic dual band antenna. Um, I choose to like this. I got this one a while ago. It seems to work pretty good. I also got a diamond and a couple other smileys and stuff like that, but you know. And then lastly, the programming cable, which is probably another generic prolific USB to, you know, Balfanger Kenwood style microphone adapter here, all right? Now, a couple things. So when you turn this on, you could, you could turn off the menu uh, language, you know, like this. Frequency mode. Now, a lot of the bow things and stuff had that. You could turn that off if you want, um, but the thing is, it's got kind of an actual voice that sounds pretty American or English to understand, okay? Dual VFO, but not dual receive, all right? Basically, one or the other. When you're, receiving on, when you're receiving on A, it'll come up and show you on B, 
receive A. Okay, and then when you transmit, you'll see A transmit, right? Um, the thing about this is when you look in the menu here. Menu. All right, let's see if I can do this here. So the menu here is pretty descript. I mean, you can understand that's for the Roger beep. That's for the transmit power high and low. Of course, side, uh, side programmable buttons here. So you can set this to the FM radio on this side, you know, PF2. And then number one, you can set to transmit power high and low in case you need to bump your power up and down. All right. Um, squelch setting, step setting, shift plus or minus, offset. And I set this just by my hand. I mean, all I really did was, you know, look at, you can look at the shortcut keys here. And I like that. If you, if you wanted, let me turn it down here. If you want to transmit power, you can hit menu one. There's your transmit power. If you want your squelch, menu two. Oops, hold on. Get back. Menu two. See what I mean? And so what I did was I put in the frequency up top, the receive frequency of the repeater. And then basically I want my CTCSS, which would be seven. I chose the CTCSS here. And then your uh, shift would be four. So there's your shift direction. Okay, and then the offset, uh, number five. There you go. So the bow thing back in the day, I remember specifically menu 26, menu 25, menu 13. That was your offset, your shift, and your tone. That was it. That's all I need to get on here. I haven't even plugged this into the computer yet to program it. So as a, and funny thing is, I just got the FT5D, and here I am using that thing like my ID52, just on the fly. I don't have anything programmed. I do it all by the fly. Just like I dial phone numbers. I don't program phone numbers. I program them when I know, want to know who's calling. But when I call somebody, I don't look in contacts. I dial the number. It's just a habit. But I can lose my phone and go to anybody's phone and dial my wife, my boss, my mother, whoever I need to. Uh, so back here. And they do have different colors. They have the crystal, which is kind of a clear, a silver, a black, a red, and a green. I chose the green when they asked me, which one do you want? Um, so different colors. Uh, and, you know, transmit A and B. So if you want to just have transmit on one uh, and receive on another you could do that um, you know so you can you can name the you can go VFO mode frequency mode you know frequency mode or channel mode and you can name them in the menu which uh, sometimes it does have transmit and receive DCS one cool thing I like is you can scan CTCSS that is always always helpful for GMRS specifically and some ham repeaters and the reason I say GMRS is because you can go to like mygmrs.com, but a lot of times you have to log into sites or you have to be a member. This is one downfall of GMRS. Not to get on a rant here, but check this out. I've been to areas where there's GMRS repeaters that have great coverage and they're linked and they won't let you get on them because they don't want people talking. They specifically told me in Flagler Beach, we only want to use this for emergencies. We don't care if it sits dormant until then. Well, that's a great idea to put up a try uh, three three repeaters in a county, okay, a tri-repeater system, and then tell nobody what the code is because you want to keep it private. And I found the code scanning, but you can't find any information. And if you remember, the member rules are leave the repeater alone. It's kind of ridiculous for GMRS, and that's turning a lot of people off. But if you go to scan CTCSS, you can scan for the tone. If somebody hasn't listed a tone or they're just being difficult, you can find it. That's pretty cool. My ICOM has that. Uh, many radios have that. You can scan DCS also, another good feature, because a lot of times people program things on there because they don't want people on there. So if you want to find the code, you can do that, all right? Um, there, there's a lot of things in here, you know, channel name. Uh, it, you, could, you could name them in the programming and then set the name that you want of that channel, all right? Um, receive end tail, that's a squelch tail at the end. Uh, you could turn it off or, or on. Um, you can see here some of these things, S code and DTMF code. You, know, you have a, a, a 1750 hertz burst and some other ones, you know, right here, 1450 and 1750, sh should you need those for um, certain systems. Um, PTT, LT, you know, Vox, Vox delay. Voice, the voice priority or encryption? We don't encrypt anything on ham radio, so. Timeout timer, wide and narrow, stuff like that. You know, it's good to use that for narrow if you're using that for uh, stuff out of ham bands. Like if you're using it for public safety, or you're testing a repeater system that is outside of the ham bands and it's narrow banded, you could use that. So you get the idea. Microphones up top. 
don't do what the normal people like myself do and talk here. You're wanting to talk into the top, and that makes a huge difference with this radio. Talking here as you're looking at it or even here is way different than talking up here in the corner, okay? Normally, you, you when you put this to your mouth, you're always, you're always thinking the microphone is down here, and a lot of times it is. This one, the microphone's up top. Something to keep in mind. Um, the SOS button, really not sure what that's for, but right now it's programmed as a radio. Too big. You know, and we just don't want to be the United it's States. It's got great Amazon. audio. It really does. Really don't. Land of the Giants, the rise of Amazon. That's all the way up. Not distorting at all. It's not distorting, so that's Number good. Number one for music, radio, and podcasts all in one. I have to say, again... <laughs> This one's going to hurt a little bit, guys. I have an ID52 and I have a Yaesu FT5D. And the audio on this is by far way better than those two. It's not their fault. It's the, the, the ruggedizing and waterproofing that they have on those two radios that muddles the sound or muffles it and makes it very tinny in some spots. This, a horrible commercial. Let's go to music. So, oh man, now you got me going back to Guitar Hero days. I used to shred on that on expert mode. Um, the thing is, if this, what I like in a handheld is to sit in my vehicle when I have the windows down driving and hear it. Unfortunately, if the ID52 or the Yaesu FT5D is sitting in that seat, I won't hear it. This one, I will hear. It's quite loud, okay? So that's a plus. The first plus is the audio. So far, my transmit audio, when I tested with another radio, sounds great. Uh, people gave me great audio reports, and the, and the receive audio on the speaker is phenomenal. That's one. Number two, I like the USB charging. That makes it very convenient for battery banks. That's what I keep saying. In my GoKit, I have battery banks. I have hand wind chargers. I have solar panels sitting over there in the corner that I could plug this into and leave outside in the sun and it'll charge this. So that's a good thing. Unfortunately, my ICOM and my Yaesu, I have to have a 120 volt for the included charger or if they have a 12 volt adapter charger, I don't have that, you know what I mean? You can't plug those in USB and charge them. That's my idea, my, my goal here to, to tell you. Uh, I like the color. I like how it's it, it feels rather okay in the hand. It doesn't, I mean, I would say, you know, I, I can't find a reason why it doesn't fit good in my hand or what it feels like, but I like it. Um, and the one thing I don't like is this stupid thing just doesn't want to stay on there. This is your uh, speaker mic for your accessory and your programming. But for the IP54 rating, this has to be on there and it, it just keeps popping open. So keep that, you know, keep that checked there if you're, if you're in the field and it's raining and, you know, this is your beater radio. Remember, this is the one that... Even if you're a newcomer and you just want one radio, but you want something a little bit different than a Baofeng, because this does have a nice color screen on there. And one thing, I'll, I'll show you this. Everybody is showing this. I'm not sure it's that big of a deal in the field, but let me do this. There's a function on here, and people are making like YouTube videos and, and, and uh, shorts on it, TikToks and stuff. I guess this is something that's never been done in a radio before. But um, here it is. If you go to Instructions and you hit OK, there's a QR code, and you can scan that on your phone. It'll take you right to the manual online. If you think that is a major plus, leave a comment. Um, I think that's pretty cool, but I, I think in my head automatically, I'm not going to have a phone on me in a natural disaster or a, a significant situation where I may need to use a radio to make contact. If I have a phone that works, I might end up using that. The idea is when the phone doesn't work, you use radio. So... That's pretty cool if you're just a hobbyist and you want to play with it. I don't think there's any beneficial, like this is something Yaesu and Icon should have done. No, I don't think so. That's just my honest opinion. So that's uh, <laughs> one of the first videos I've made in a long time. Um, been busy with life moments, and uh, you'll hear about those later. I'm not going to tell you about them in this video. But the link to this is in the description. I think for a $50 radio, average $50 price, I think it's pretty good. I, I don't see any problem with it. Um, the, the wife really wants this one. She, she says, well, I like the color. She says, I like how the antenna matches the button. I said, well, that's, that antenna's mine. But if I can just, I mean, she can get on GMRS with this. I can program the channels in there. When it came, 
as a GMRS radio, the channels were in there. They were all in there, 1 through 22, and then the repeater channels. So they were in there. But as I did the expand and started typing in numbers, there went the, you know, they're probably still in there, but um, it's now just like a Baofeng at this point. And are there different custom firmwares for this? Uh, I'm not sure, but if I go like this, let me try something else here. Frequency mode, 1, 3, 2, 2, 5, 0. So there's your AM, okay? When you, I just typed that in. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm not really sure of uh, frequencies for AM, I mean, for every receive, but it automatically goes into AM when you go down to those frequencies. And I'm not sure what is a, com you know, what's commonly used around here. I'm not sure, but it does do AM airband receive right there. Uh, so you can program those channels in and monitor on here and here. It'll, it'll you know, monitor whatever you're listening to okay so you, you got airband received but you cannot say it, it won't let you transmit on the am airband okay of course i would hope so all right so that's it man uh let me know what you think about this radio in this video and uh, for more advanced videos and people that uh, really do a, a real in-depth walkthrough on this look online uh, Josh and, and uh, not a Rubicon and, and all these other guys have videos in depth and and uh, temporary offline they, they show this radio and the spectral purity which is not that great and some things they don't like about it some things they do so check those channels out as well they're all over YouTube and they'll give you a better in depth this is just my opinion here and uh, hey take care everyone seven three ham radio concepts is brought to you by hamradioprep.com it's never been easier to learn about ham radio before you take the exam and ham radio prep makes it fun and guarantees your success visit hamradioprep.com use the code eric20 to instantly save 20 percent off every course you buy remember the name hamradioprep.com